Welcome back to the two-time, maybe three, if the Geek Lounge has anything to do with it, uh, award-winning <laughs> Curvaceous Bounty of Sin City. Check us out on SinCityBounty.com or on VegasAllNetRadio.com. That's right. We're, we're all net internet radio, so we can say whatever the fuck we want. Which we love. You know, I, I was talking to uh, the radio heads of state here and about <laughs> maybe getting our show over onto the AM station because... Late at night, you can you can say a few words. You, you know, can talk about the things we talk about. No, oh, yeah. no, no. Um, we would have to filter a lot to be I over on the station. Would like we that. would have to do a one a one clean hour during our three, and we couldn't do five clean fucking minutes. No, no, we can't. No, we tried it. We tried doing a clean show. We had a guest on who was like a big prude, and uh, so we. No, just she, was, she wrote romance novels, and there was no sex in the romance novels. How do you write a romance novel, and you don't have one passionate clothes ripping scene? It's not necessary. It doesn't make you a prude. Just makes you conservative. Every single one of them waited to get waited to have sex until they got married on the last page of the book. That's Which, a proof. What is that about? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so they we haven't tried to go me back to AM radio since the one time I went on. Yeah, I'm, and you almost oh, like poor Ryan have a heart attack. I know. So we tried it. We tried having a clean show. We did a practice run. And we got in it about four minutes and 35 seconds. And it was you. And it was me who said, hey, has anyone fucked it up yet? Oh, there we went. I <laughs> fucked it up. And I said, if I want to wear a fucking bikini, I'll wear a fucking bikini. And Ryan's like, ah, I hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our kid. dream of maybe being on AM or FM radio is never going to happen. Gonna it's happen. not our style. So no. the only way you can get us is by downloading our, tu- our archives off of iTunes. Um, and even iTunes is a little leery about putting us up sometimes. They're <laughs> yeah. like, hey. This is explicit. Yeah, Ustream sometimes cuts us off, too. Um, so we haven't had any problems with YouTube, except for when our material uh, content, music content matches. But then right. we just don't get played in Belgium, so sorry, Belgiumese. We can go to our website and get our downloads Belgiumites? there. Yeah, the Belgiumites. Belgiumites? <laughs> that sounds like a rock group, the Belgiumites. No, it's not, it sounds like a really terrible it's Australian food substance. So we love we love doing radio. We yeah, we okay. love being we love doing the video. That's just a new addition. Um otherwise yeah, we're we're just a radio. It's a new show. addition for the last three years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean it's a it's a it's an added benefit, right? It's an added benefit because we get to do bra shots, which I can see your bra now already, so mm-hmm. not just her straps. Yeah. Have you got on an old granny bra on today? No, oh, I just got a white one on. Um, I do want to do a show, Miss Fashionista, about the physics of an underwire and how that one little (laughs) wire is supposed to make your boobs look much better than a regular bra. And it does. I don't. I don't see how. It does. does. Believe me, I used to wear bras exactly like you you wear. Even you notice that there's a difference in your bras when you have your underwire on as opposed to your. What I notice is that the underwire bras cut into my skin, so I'm more conscious of the bra that I'm wearing. So I keep my back straight. You're wearing the wrong. If I don't, it hurts. You're wearing the wrong. Long size bra. Yeah, I've been telling want, you that for underwires years. Underwires make them much rounder, make them stick up better. It doesn't look like I'm wearing a sports bra. It's, I swear to you, it's a little wire. It's I'll a, show them. It's this thin of a little wire you're underneath wearing, your boot. It's like this one. There's you guys wearing a wrong look. Okay, I'm going to do bra <laughs> shot. Everybody count down for 20 seconds. 10, Why? 9. Because i got to give Callie Guy time to get back to the computer. Oh, oh. that's what <laughs> Callie Guy's going to do for the bra <laughs> shot. Right. So here's my bra. Here's my fabulous. Let me point this down so you can actually get my titties. Here's my bra. This wire is not this big. This fucking thing has got a good inch on it at least. Jesus, that's an inch <laughs> wide wire? Well, that's why that bra cost a million fucking dollars. Yes, but look. You have an underwire too? See, yeah, aren't see? they better? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. She, she has, well, did we get her bra on camera? Oh. We got to put her bra on camera. <laughs> it's padded. I was going to say, Irma, you got to get the pads and the wire. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It does make your boobs look better. Yeah. So, And I also have that beautiful separation here now. They're not all smushed up together. And I don't get all that boob sweat that happens right down in here anymore it would be you know what i think i really think the underwire makes me look better in clothes than the other kind of bras okay. yeah because it puts my boobs up where they're supposed exactly. to be or at and least where the clothes me, say they and should it makes be. me look a little bit you know thinner in here than when i have like the other kind of bra and yeah do you know the difference between an underwire and a non-underwire and do you have a preference I prefer no bra at all, but other than that, I mean, no. Uh, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So you, do you, you don't know the difference between the two then? Most no. men don't. No, right? I, I don't at all. 
<laughs> well, I, I swear to God, a man invented the bra because, my God, what a harness. It is a torture device. It's a torture device. <laughs> but we wear it. Well, for men. Over the bo- shoulder boulder holder. We I, do wear it. I like it. I like it to, that keeps my bottom of my boobs separated from my belly. That's why I wear it. Well, bra. the underwire would do that <laughs> even more. And it does do that. Okay. Your uh, boobs. We will look. never talk her into an underwire. She has underwire. I have underwire bras. She I hates don't them. like them. In that shirt right she's... there, because that's a little more fitted than some of the other shirts, that shirt you should wear an underwire with. Just because it's more fitted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll give your boobs the structure I would they rather need. wear a corset, I think. If I'm going to wear something that's torturous, I think a corset would make me feel sexier me, and a, look better. An underwire does not torture you like Heidi a fucking agrees corset with me. will. I'm not talking like the corset from the 1800s where you have to have a second person lacing you up in the back. Although those are fun too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of corset are you talking about? Just, just the simple kind. There's a little bit of lacing, but it's usually stuff that you can do but on if your own. Not an underwire and a good cup on that thing. Your tits will look the same as they look now. I don't know. I, I, I go out to the Ren Fair um, every other year or so. Oh with yeah, a corset. they push it up. They push it oh, up. Oh hell yeah, yeah they do. True. Uh, it's still a kind of a torture device because you yeah. still feel relief when you get at home, but it's the same relief as when I take off my bra when I get home. Wendy is suggesting a rival podcast for people to go listen to. <laughs> what? Wendy? What? Stuff Mom Never Told You. That oh, I love that podcast. I do too. I listen to that yeah. too. Um, I also listen to uh, Useless Information, which is a great podcast. I, oh, you were telling me a little bit about that. So. Um, yeah, so... Uh, they covered that a man did invent the bra. They covered that on the oh, podcast. There you go. A man mm. invented makeup, too. Yes, they did. Yes, and they did. high heel shoes. And that I do know. <laughs> well, that's because, <laughs> but that's because men wore high heeled shoes first. They did. I men think men wore, wore makeup shoes. first, too. Didn't yes, they? they did. Yeah, the because women stuff? couldn't yeah. be thespians. Mm-mm. No, men wore makeup. That's why they invented it. Men did not wear bras. That was a strictly tortured device. Although the, uh, a lot of men could wear them now. That's true. <laughs> no, that's that's um, not necessarily a bra, but at the same time, women were wearing corsets, men were wearing corsets too. That's true. Men yeah. were wearing corsets. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. Look, you come and you learn something, and we also say fuck. So <laughs> <laughs> we're smart and fucking lewd. <laughs> I fucking love this show. <laughs> uh, Tyson says, "Am I wrong for asking about adding me to friends with benefits?" Well, that's because we we mentioned that the video was added. But so Wendy said, "So you guys are my friends with benefits." Yes, you yes, come yes, to town, yes, Wendy. We, we can are. talk about that now. I know, Wendy. If if you can if you can steer away from Disneyland, Disneyland for a minute and come to town, we'd love to have you in studio. Oh so. God, yes. We got an email this week then. from our furry friend Moose. Who is doing a show? He's playing a show here in Vegas. So he's going to be in studio. And we are going to be bringing him in studio. He is so, hot. Yeah. Is he coming in? Do you know anything about furries? furries? Do you know what the furry lifestyle okay. is? Furries, go ahead. Somebody, you know okay, so to because it. my ex husband is a furry, I have to explain <laughs> this. So people like to dress up like some anthropomorph- anthropomorphic animals. like An animal. Yeah, they like to dress up like animals I believe and pretend that they are those I believe, dogs. I believe Moose Rabbit. is a ocelot. Yeah. Ocelot lynx? No, he's a tig. He's a tigsalot. Tigsalot. He's a tiger slash ocelot. ocelot. Yes. Um, my ex is something weird. I don't remember what it was, but anyway. And the, so they the CSI they dress up with, about a convention they, they, here in town. They, there's varying degrees of them. Some of them just like you know role playing in bed. Some of them have like furry mittens. Some have little ears. Some people go all the fuck out. They do the face paint. They have, um, they have, uh, you know the. Is anyone here watch Face Off? Mm, yeah. Well, no, I've watched an episode or two. Yeah. So it's they the have, it's the sci-fi makeup show. Yeah, they they put on uh, prosthesis to make their faces look more animalistic, and and they they'll go into this role either you know at conventions or they go to furry parties or for some some people it's a lifestyle they're like that all the time, and uh, they get not just a physical sexual rush from it, but they a lot of them get an emotional rush from it too. We met a furry at Fan Fest last year, BBW Fan Fest, and she was a cat and she full cat costume big licking bell. her paws the big, whole yeah, big nine yards bell around her neck for breakfast she had a cup of milk in front of her that she drank out of the milk mm. and it's a whole subculture of but sexually it's about people who like to dress in fur and have well, sex with and, other people dressed in fur 
And then, and then, like mm. the girl who was the furry, also she says, "I'm training my pony." So she also plays the trainee. She has a guy who wants to be a pony, and she trains. Yes, her but pony. pony play is completely separate is. from furry play. Yeah, it's a completely separate thing. Yeah, because that's what the whole bridle and the bit on the and internet. Wow. You'll learn a lot. Oh, my favorite, wait, though. Wait, wait, wait. We should tell her about, um, what was the one we learned about? Um, vor. 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 Have you ever heard of vor um, fetish? It's where uh. you, you, you fantasize about someone eating you. Like no, no, physically about you eating, being you. eating, right? About no, about you being, and not not in the sense you. that we know what eating you means. <laughs> no, 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 not like that. Because whatever, but no more like, like a sen- semi cannibalistic sort of way. Yeah, like, like like this guy came up to one of the porn stars and says, "I just want." You to eat me and let me be he, in your belly. He was jealous of the food right. going down her throat into so her she belly. She actually did a yeah a porn film wow. and made little baloney men, men out of baloney to do the whole you know licking it to for for this fan that wanted to be in her belly. She he was jealous of the food. Wow. Crazy. I wonder what you causes. No, I wonder what causes that. See, like, I'm with you, you Joe. I want to know. Went, wow, this is what I feel like having. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I like to know the the brain power behind what yeah, some of these was... fetishes are, where the, how they where they yeah, get to where they get. What kind of parents did this person? Yeah, have? Like, what what kind of but you know what's you know what's crazy though is some people have these fetishes and it's literally it's just something they came across on a website somewhere and it's it's for most of these people it is less about that particular fetish and more about how taboo this fetish fetish is. They want something that they they enjoy that. Re- it's taboo is what they really enjoy about it. It's not something that people would like in culture. A friend of mine told me about, um, she, she says to me, she was telling me about an injury that occurred in her home and there's blood all over her wall. And she goes, I know what you're thinking, but it wasn't from sex this time. Oh, <laughs> this time. <laughs> so she's telling me the rest of the story. And at the end of it, I said, I don't know about you. Well, I, I guess I know about you. But if I'm having sex and there's blood anywhere, I am not Out having sex here. anymore. Dexter! <laughs> Dexter! That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but there are a lot of people that are into the blood play as well. Yeah. That whole vampire kind of... Yeah, not my thing. I don't know. If I see I'm blood, not, I'm just... No, no, I'm, I'm absolutely yeah. a whips and chains and welts kind of girl. Welts are okay. I have no problem with welts. Bruises are okay. I have Hell no problem yeah, with bruises. bruises are okay. Because they you remember every day. Yeah, when you're like, oh, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> 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 it was so good. Do you guys have any kinks that you want to share? Uh, Some that you don't want to share. <laughs> Some that you don't want to share, but share anyway. Any kinks that we have? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Uh, are there, you know, pretty do you role play at all? She's smiling. They role play. Uh, uh, <laughs> Why do you do the school girl and teacher thing? Is that what you guys do? I see that. He likes the nurse thing. I still have to pull that one on him. He wants me to be a nurse, I'm sure. I think it's one of his fantasies. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, what were you wearing the other day? Oh, the Those. other day I had my leopard padded bra on and my little leopard panties and my big fur boots. So it was all the furry. It was the fur play. Yeah, I guess so. I actually bought those, so maybe I am into that and I didn't know. See? See? You want a cat? <laughs> 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 you know, you have to sit up on the back of the sofa like the cat. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Apples, now, you know. do you guys, have you guys tried something new and decided you didn't like it or tried something new and decided that you did like it and now incorporate that? on a semi-regular basis? Have you ever done anything like that? Or do you just uh, have straight sex? Turn. Oh, let's see. You know, actually, I hate to say this, but I'm kind of on the boring side, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I try to be really good at the basics. Well, that's <laughs> right, too. There's nothing wrong with that. There Somebody who's concerned about the bases, Joe. That's good. <laughs> I've met a few guys you could teach a few lessons to. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you get a little overboard with all the flipping and whipping and chaining and all of that you stuff. You fall off the bed. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, especially if there's such cheats there. Yeah. <laughs> you slide like crazy. So, <laughs> but, so sometimes, you know, regular sex is fine. Go yeah. ahead, Joe. Oh, you say what I kind of do like, it reminds me, I don't know why I like this so much, but it reminds me of, like, I guess when I was a high school football player. You know, I don't mind. Group sex is really good. But mm-hmm. you got to be with the right person because they kind of think that okay, that person over there looks good. They kind of kind of get jealous. Uh-huh. Oh my could god, be. They're swingers! So that's a Are difficult thing. No, 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 just group sex, not necessarily no, group swinging. Sex. It doesn't yeah. mean that you have to swing. Right, right. I got you. Oh, in the like, same room, in like a whole like I got seventies kind of thing where everybody's just kind of having sex. Like, like, like yeah, a that's run, very cool. I've like, been in those you know, situations. Ron Jeremy and the Sperminator. 
Have you seen that one? <laughs> We've had a couple of orgies in our day and age. We no, have. I have not I seen that, Ron Jeremy. I'm not a big fan. You know, as cool as Ron Jeremy is, I'm not a big fan He's of his. nasty. He always looks like he needs a bath to me. <laughs> <laughs> he is nasty, but he is He's so not. nasty. Ron it's Jeremy, awesome. Ron Jeremy, he's a uh, porn either. star. If you've seen him, you'd know him. Oh. He's a uh, old-time porn He's star. like camp porn. Right, that campy B movie rated brown chicken brown. I, oh, I just geez. wish I'd see a movie of his where he takes a bath. Oh, <laughs> but I think he it's so. good because that means the average guy thinks they have a chance. I think that's probably you know, why he like was yeah. so popular. Yeah, if he was too good looking, if he was too anything. Well, and yeah. Ron Jeremy will do any kind of porn. Thin girl porn, fat girl porn. I the one of the first times I seen Ron Jeremy was there was a there used to be a porn girl named Taylor. She was the one that came out first in all of those um cards at the Spencers, you know, where they were making fun of the fat chicks on the cover with the big eyelashes and shadow and that was Taylor and Ron Jeremy actually did a porn video with her. That was, and then, you know, you really he does the gamut. He's, he's well, getting his dick hard for My anything. first Ron Jeremy for, for, uh, film was a spoof flick on the Terminator called The Sperminator. I think I saw that one. Uh, I think Is that where there was sex being done on the hood of a car? There's something like that. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, but Ron Jeremy <laughs> is the guy who comes back in time to inseminate... Uh, uh, yeah, oh. yeah oh. that's who he plays. Oh. And he's telling, about, he's telling about what a terrible future the future is because it's this like animated i don't know what it is but there's this huge like th thriving like body limbs flailing everywhere orgy happening in this flashback scene to the future or whatever so you guys call it group sex but isn't that an orgy wouldn't that be an orgy yeah oh, people aren't swimming okay. though right You're pretty much with your partners well there, there's a hole <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I guess i don't know look no, but up, see, here's look the, up thing. what the official <laughs> definition it, is for orgy what's the official definition of an orgy but i think it's um between the people involved they make their own their own rules before. right yeah so one of the good things is i think for women anyway i could even say from my point of view if i know that there's some guy with a girl i'm gonna be better so I'm listening to see if my girl is making more sounds. And ah. I'm, I'm trying to see when he's finished so I can continue at least twice as long, you know. So it's, <laughs> it's a competition. It's a very goddamn competition. competition. It's a, it's a goddamn competition, right? Yeah. Well, it is. So we get a bunch of guys. Yeah, that's what here, it is. Here's the thing that I worry about when it comes to group sex. Because if you – there are, there are a lot of things in life that if you commit to it, you go there, and if, even if there's an element that you don't like, you're kind of stuck there, you're right? Stuck, yeah. So if you if you agree to go to a group sex party or something like that, and you're in the situation, your clothes are off, you're ready to go, and in walks the boyfriend of some hot girl, and he's a creepy, creepy guy kind of guy. Are you kind of still stuck there? Are you no, really? Then you stay with no. your partner, and you don't go even go no. near that partner. No, you have when you go and you make the rules, and that's what you stick to. Yeah, you and your partner and, and, decide and, what's okay. Yeah, and if somebody it, wants didn't to, that happen a few weeks ago? If somebody wants to, um, yeah, somebody wants to cut in on that, it's basically no. I don't think so. You just I mean, change. It's, it's a, it, you know what? There is a little bit of respect level there. Uh -huh. People think they walk in these things, and people are just a free for all, and that they're touching and grabbing. It doesn't matter if the, if you say no, though, it's no. So you don't, and you have to be with a partner that you trust that when you make the rules going in there, that the rules are going to stick. Are gonna right, stick. Right, right, right. There's no malleable rules. It's right. rules are rules. <laughs> Can you reintroduce our guests? Uh, yeah. Uh, we have Heidi and Joe from the From Grief to Relief show. What is the show about? Yeah, what is, say, what is the, the tagline for your show? Well, it's a Grief to Relief show. Um, basically what it is is about people overcoming adversity. Uh, we all go through bad things, and it's a matter of making those bad things an actual good thing in your life. So the name of the show comes from a title of a book that you wrote. Yeah. Called From Grief to Relief, and right. the adversity that you discuss in that book is? Oh, am I allowed to talk about it on this show? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't want to bring everybody down. But no, no, it's good. It's happened before. Okay. <laughs> we talk about serious things sometimes. All the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah that sound you hear is For your ratings five dropping, minutes right? every no, 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 not at all. Well, what I did was I started doing some of my own, of my own writing uh, when my wife had died. And then I had two stepchildren, so of course I lost those two kids because they went to go with their supposed sperm donor father. So I lost <laughs> that too. So you end up coming into the house and everything's totally absent. There's nothing there. So you're about as alone as you can be. You know, things are really bad. And plus, as a personal trainer, I ended up losing half of my clients. And... Are we allowed to be political here at all, too? Oh, we're yeah, uh, absolutely. We're very political. 
All right, well, I'm unless we don't agree with your politics, then we'll, then we'll, then we'll oh, take it down. And I'm a libertarian, so I don't agree with anybody's politics. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for the Obama campaign, okay? Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> but it's okay. So anyway, so one of we the reasons her. why she died was from a bunch of mistakes in the medical community. <laughs> now, half of my clients are Republicans, and they, they will sit there and draw that line of Republicans are great, health healthcare the way it is is awesome, it's great. So I didn't want to hear them anymore. So I basically dumped half of my clientele because they were just putting it on me like, you know, it's not that problem. In other words, a bunch of years ago, too, I wrote this article about medical malpractice and how if you are not allowed to sue a doctor who makes mistakes, you're basically giving them a license to kill. Yeah. Just so happened they killed my wife at that time. And I can't sue and I could not sue because of the laws that be that Republicans want to put in place. So I didn't want to hear them bad-mouthing me and my views because I was the one who paid for it, big. And so I basically dumped them to start new. And so that's kind of what the book is about, is that you can start new. Everything in my life now is totally brand new. I've got new friends. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> um, I've got a whole new life, and it's great. I've got the book. I've got a radio show, and, th and things are 100% better. So I try to tell people you know, how to do that. So when we come back from uh, this next break, we'll do our full-on interview with these guys. Now, um, Joe is also uh, Mr. Nevada. He was a Mr. Nevada bodybuilder, bodybuilder, twice, competitor. Twice, right, Joe? 2006 right? and 2010. And, awesome. And Heidi is a competition bodybuilder as well. And in fact, you're in training right now, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah? For uh, are. What, are you, what are you in training for? Uh, the Nevada Classic is in November, Nevada Classic. November 2nd. So. so she's, look at her arms. I know. You think about right. Michelle Obama's arms and how great those look? No, no. These, uh, <laughs> these are guns right yeah. here. These are guns. <laughs> now, do you got to get all tanned up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll tan, talk about that. Do you hair, spray tan makeup. or do you... You know, I've Bed done the tan. spray tanning, but one of my friends was out this a couple months ago, and she does the own tanning herself. She showed me how to do it, so I'm considering doing my own this time mm. to save time and probably some money. But the time thing is the big thing because you're, you're driving all over town getting spray tan. <laughs> so, okay, well, we're going to be right back with uh, Joe and Heidi, and I can't wait. This they, this is another great guest we got. So don't go away. Um, Sin City Bounty will be right back. 